Bro Stocks new Jackknife Pack, brand new in their EDC lineup. As of 12 November 2022, there's not very much information about it on the internet. So hopefully this video will provide a first look for you to see if this is the new everyday carry bag for you. So first, we're going to go over some tech specs for this bag. And we're going to look at a comparison for other bags similar to it in the Berto Stock lineup. And then we're going to see what this bag is actually made for. Is it made for you? Is it going to be your next bag? We will see. Hopefully, I'll be able to do a more in-depth review on it later down the road. But starting off with the tech specs, this is 1,000 cubic inches which means it's about 150 inches bigger than the Bandit as a little brother. But it also means it's about 50 cubic inches smaller than its big brother, the Switchblade. And you can see there's a very sizable difference. The website says this one's 1,050. I almost feel like it's closer to 1,500. I think that might've been a typo on their website. I haven't measured it out. That's just my gut feeling seeing them in person. So, a Burlo stock made this bag as a primary function to carry breakdown rifles. That means its main compartment is this three-sided zip clamshell. It's got a nice soft Velcro interior to it. It's not going to scratch your rifle or any kind of optics that you may have on it. Um, the only video I saw of this about a week ago when I first ordered this pack showed a Burlestock's uh, SHOT Show version, and it had a media, a media divider in the middle of the back. But this bag, the one I have, does, does not have that. Um, and that is a running feature in this pack that I'm disappointed by the amount of organization in it. So they claim that this is made for the 1022 takedown, uh, the Ruger PCC or Charger, other uh, pistol caliber carbine rifles, and then maybe even short barrel rifles if you've paid that tax stamp. So to compare it to Ruger's own 1022 takedown bag in terms of length and width, I've got these sides leveled up. Ruger's bag is about three to four inches longer, but they're about the same width. So if you own one of these and your rifle has a hard time fitting in it lengthwise based on anything that you have that you're running on it, you might have a hard time fitting it into this pack. And hopefully I'll be able to do a better review um, in the future where I'll be able to take out a pistol caliber carbine and the 1022 and actually show it to you in this bag. But carrying on, um, I will come back to this in terms of what I think this bag will actually end up being used for. Uh, Sneak peek. I don't think it's going to be an EDC bag for rifles, but we'll get there. Carrying on with the second largest um, part of this backpack is the media compartment, where you just have this uh, short zip top. As a, I mean, uh, it does not come all the way down. The zipper doesn't come down to the length of the pack, which is actually a feature I like, being able to rip a pack open and get down to the bottom of your bag. This one does not have that feature. It just has a little flip lid. And then the inside of it is that same nice Velcro material as the clamshell. It's got the uh, Camelback bladder holder, and then it's just got a little media separator there that you can see. And Abrilla Stock's website claims it can fit a 17 inch computer. This one's 15.6, and it fits in there absolutely no problem. Uh, room to spare so i do believe a 17 inch laptop could fit in there no problem which is one of the only gripes i have about the bandit um this has been my everyday carry bag for months now i had a multi-camp version i took on deployment with me and i used the crap out of it every single day and when i came back home i got one um, in a different color so i wasn't wearing multi-cam everywhere i went but these guys can't fit laptops in them which stinks so i'm glad this one does Carrying on, there is no extra organization inside this uh, pack other than the media divider. And then if you're familiar with a Burla stock bags, they have little side compartments where like two pockets on the top on either side can fit a pistol magazine. And then two deeper pockets down here in the very bottom of the bag on the inside um, can fit something about the size of a can of soup, a 12 ounce can of soda. That's about the size of it. So. This bag actually does get kind of skinny in the very bottom. And if you can look at the, the profile of it there, 
it's not flat on the bottom of the pack. So if you had this thing loaded up and you put it on the ground, it definitely would fall over, um, which isn't ideal. It's a small thing, but I like how my bandit stands up when I put it on the ground. I just know everything in there is not gonna fall over. I don't think this pack will do that. Carrying on, there is another organizational um, pocket. Again, there's no organization inside of it though. So you can still throw your keys, your phone, um, your wallet in there, but it's just gonna be floating around. And if you compare that to the Bandit, this one has got a nice little uh, zippered mesh pocket. It's got your key holder and it's got a multi-tool slash pocket knife pocket. And I use all of those regularly in this bag. It's one of my favorite parts of it. For something that's so small and so inexpensive, um, I'll bring that up now that this bag's $150, jackknife $230. And uh, I think the Bandit blows the jackknife out of the water in terms of internal organization, which is kind of unfortunate for a more expensive bag. Other than that, moving down the pack, you have a nice little three inch by two inch Velcro there underneath um, the embroidered name, this subdued. And then you have another external pocket on the side. It's about a hand and a half width deep, um, about a hand width wide. And I could imagine you using this if you're going for a day hike. Um, you can put some cliff bars in it, some electrolytes, um, maybe like a, a compact poncho, something like that. And you'd have pretty easy access to it from this little side zip pocket. Down to the, what I call the water bottle pockets. They finally got it right. A Burlistock finally did it. They transferred over from their ripstop canvas type thing with the drawstring that you have to like undo it, put your bottle in and tie it back on that they finally have an elastic option. So you can just take your little Nalgene, throw it in there and the elastic is pretty tight. And on top of that, they have a buckle um, that just happens to be at the perfect height at the top of a Nalgene. So if you didn't have the broken uh, top like I do, hashtag Nalgene knife, you could just buckle that through and your bottle is going to go absolutely nowhere without you wanting it to. So good on you, Alberto Stock, you fixed that. I've been waiting years for that feature. So that's uh, moving on to the back. Almost every Alberto Stock bag has this where you have the adjustable height. Um, they're always very soft, very breathable um, backs and shoulder straps. Um, these shoulder straps are wider than the Bandit's, so you can potentially carry a little bit more weight with it. I never had a problem with the Bandit's uh, shoulder straps for how small that pack is. I don't think you can really load it up enough for the, that to be a problem. Either way, this one is their conventional um, strap and back padded system. I love it. I wear them everywhere. I've been using these packs for 10 years. Absolutely no complaints with the back. So moving on to who this pack is actually for and how I actually be, uh, how I be, see it being used. I'm not so sure a Burla stock hit this one on the head. Um, if you're looking for an EDC bag, you're probably not gonna use a broken down rifle for self-defense. In that case, you're probably gonna use the handy little magnetic pocket like you see on the Switchblade. I think this is one of the best ideas they've had in a while. Um, I still think the pocket's a little bit too big that your firearm kind of floats around in there. Um, they might fix that soon, but carrying a broken down rifle is definitely not my idea of EDC. If it's yours, then this could be your go-to bag. If I wanted to carry a rifle that's broken down, um, I would probably use either the Cherry Bomb, which I've had for years, uh, the Gunslinger 2, which they've had for years, or I would just get a more functional bag with better organization that has a scabbard option. And again, they've been offering those for years. So what I do see this bag being used for is a weekender slash commuting bag. It can fit your laptop, it can fit a couple of belongings, some food, um, the basic essentials on top. And then I see the clamshell section actually being used for clothes. Um, I like to roll my t-shirts and my jeans and my shorts and my workout clothes and maybe a pair of shoes, underwear and socks, and have like three or four days of clothes in here, close it shut, and then when I get to a hotel room or wherever I'm going, I'm just able to open up the bag, 
and boom, change clothes, throw it back in, be good to go, all while maintaining my laptop and my book and my camera, everything else I have in the main media compartment. So like I said, hopefully I'll be able to do a more in-depth review of this bag. I will still try to use the 1022 takedown and my Ruger PCC in it to show you more about that feature. Um, but I see this as someone going to the office on a daily basis that might want to take a longer weekend with it. Um, that's just my idea for now. If you have thoughts, leave them in the comments below. If you want to see more material like this in comparisons, let me know. Um, everything is appreciated. And until then, stay safe, be kind, and stay hungry.